Okay, so yeah, we need to set up some variables, but what, what are the variables going to be? Like, physically, what are they going to represent? The number of numbers we have for each. Yeah, the number, we have three types of uh, field goals, so we need like, I don't know, what variables do you want to use? X, Y, Z. X, Y, Z, good. Okay, so let's do that. So let's let X equal the number of three, uh, sorry, four point, four point goals. I'm just going to abbreviate it here. X is the four point goals, and Y will be the number of uh, six point goals, and Z would be the number of nine point goals. Okay, so those are the those are the variables. So now Lisa's suggestion was to set up some equations. So what kind of equations do you see here? Do this is, do you see an equation? What equation that we can use? X plus Y plus Z equals 23. X plus Y plus Z equals 23. So if we add up all the types, it's the total number of field goals is 23, right? So we'd have X plus Y plus Z is equal to 23. Okay, looks good. And what else? Four. Uh, Derek? 4X plus uh, 6Y plus 9Z uh, equals 137. Okay, perfect. So we have those those two equations. Uh, what kind of a, uh, what's the your question? So you would prefer us to actually label all the treatment variables? Well, if you're going to introduce remember, if you're going to introduce variables into the, the problem, then you should tell me what they represent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wouldn't be real. I mean, okay, if you didn't write this down and you just wrote the equations right away, yeah, I yeah. I would be able to figure it out. But, uh, you know what you meant by it because the four, the six, and the nine are obviously matched up with what X, Y, and Z represent, but it wouldn't be, I don't know what I would do. I might take off the point. I wouldn't be too rough with you on that, but you should say it, okay? At this level, you should say that. Okay, so we have, the, what kind of equations are these called? Diapontine equations, back to chapter two, right? Early on in the semester. And we are looking, in this case, for a list of possibilities for what kind of X, Y, Z. We're kind of looking for triples here triples of x, y, z that would solve the, uh, the equation. So, okay. Um, so any suggestions as to sort of how we might want to work with these two, two diaphragmatine equations? Any ideas on what's the, the next step here? Well, Sorry, Brittany? You can solve this in the first one the second one. Is that what you were going to say? Exactly, good. So we're going to solve for one of the variables and plug it into the other one. Let's just take, uh, it's easier to avoid fractions if you solve it in the first one and plug it into the second one. So 4x plus 6y plus 9 times the quantity 23 minus x minus y adds up to 137. Okay, so let's simplify that. Uh, that let's see, that's going to be, uh, oh gosh, uh, so 20. So I have 4x and negative 9x, that's negative 5x. And I have 6y and negative 9y is negative 3y. And then um, let me just put this, let's see, what's 22 times 9? 207. 207, am I right? Yeah, 207. And I have to subtract that from 137, and that should be negative 70. Let's see if that's any more close to the right answer. It is. It's amazing. I can do math on a Saturday. All right. Uh, I don't like all the negative numbers. Let me just multiply it through by negative 1. I just happen to rearrange it kind of backwards. So 5x plus uh, 3y is equal to 70 is sort of our single, single GCD that we have here. Okay. Um, so do these Diophantine equations always have uh, solutions for integer solutions? These have to be integers, right? The number of goals that you make is always going to be a whole number. So do we always get a solution to a Diophantine equation? No. Not always, right? It depends on the numbers. So do you remember what the condition is? Uh, so let's just go in general here. If I have like, you know, AX plus BY equals C as my Diophantine equation, um, this has a solution if and only if, what was the condition? GCD of Right, the GCD of A and B divides, divides into C, very good. Okay, so that's the, that's the condition. For uh, 
this is, can they see on the camera over to this board? No? So I should stop using this board. Okay. <laughs> I'll go back over here. Or we could just tease them with it. <laughs> One time I was doing the video and I was I was talk, talking about the test and I said well, I'm pro I was going to I said something along the lines of I'm probably going to put this on the test and then I started right out and then click the camera went off. <laughs> it's like and the answer is wipe us off. They can't see it. I got a lot of fun with that. Okay. All right, so I'm not going to go over this. So in this case, the GCD of uh, 5 and 3 is 1. Definitely divide 70, so we're okay. GCD of 5 and 3 is 1. Divide 70, so we know that uh, we're going to get we're going to get solutions to this, okay? Um, in fact, how many solutions are we going to get? One Actually, you get, you get infinitely many solutions in this context because what happens is there's that parameter t, like you find one solution and then all of the other solutions are parameterized from, from the one that, that you've already found. So um, any suggestions on how to come up with one solution to this system? <laughs> okay, here's the idea guys. I know that, the, okay, the GCD of 5 and 3 is 1. So I know that 5 times something plus 3 times, I know that I can do, remember you can write the GCD as an integer linear combination of 5 and 3. And then that would equal to 1. If I, I don't want it to equal to 1, I want it to equal to 70. So all I do to make it equal to 70 is, is scale up the, the equation by a factor of 70. So let's just do that here. So with the GCD of 5 and 3 equaling 1, I'm just going to run my, I guess we've been doing this a lot, this is an easy one though. 5 goes into 3, 3 goes into 5 one time with a remainder of 2, and 3 goes into 2 one time with a remainder of 1, right? So now I run the algorithm backwards, right? So I get 1 is equal to 3 minus 2, which is equal to 3 minus the quantity 5 minus 3, so of course and you could have seen this. Okay. Jeff wants to know if he can just write that down if he sees it. Uh, <laughs> sure, <laughs> that, that's such a small, those numbers are so small that um, I would be okay with that. Uh, so 1 is equal to 2 times 3 minus 5. So what we want to do then is just multiply it through by 70. But when you're multiplying it through by 70, be sure to preserve the 5 and the 3. Because those are the numbers that need to be in the equation there. So I'm going to multiply it through by 70. So I'm going to get uh, 70 is equal to, um, so in other words, right here when you're taking 2 times 3 and you're going to multiply it by 70, be sure to keep the 70 with the 2. So that's 140 times 3 and then plus negative 70 times 5. <coughs> Let me just actually rewrite that so that it looks, looks like the form of that box. Is everybody with me? So it's really 5 times negative 70 plus 3 times 140 equals 70. So we have found one solution to this system, which is x naught y naught equal to negative 70 and 140. You guys need to make sure that you write these in the same order that they appear in the equation over there. So if you if for some reason you didn't put the five, uh, so if you did, well, I did it right here. I have the three in front of the five. I have to be sure I realize this is going to be the x part and this is going to be the y part. If they're written in the backwards order, you don't want to make that mistake. Okay, so one solution to this problem is that if I make negative 70 uh, four point field goals and 140 six point field goals and then solve for z, to figure out how many nine point field goals I have, then that would, in theory, solve the problem. The only difficulty is, of course, that uh, you can't make a negative number of field goals. So now we need to figure out what the rest of the solutions look like. Okay, so let's remind ourselves how that works. Let's have to come over here again. Does anybody remember the formula? Yeah. Okay, go ahead, Nicole. 
Um, Tell me how to get the rest of them. It's x naught plus b over d times t, and then y naught minus a over d times t. Oh man, that's a great one to put on your flashcard under your pillow at night and just uh, keep reminding yourself of how to get the rest of the solutions to the Diophantine equation. What is d, by the way? GCB. The GCB of the A and the B, which actually in this case was 1. So that's actually this number over here. D is equal to that. Okay, so we just have uh, x naught plus B. And the B is the coefficient of the y here. So that would be 3t and then y naught minus 5t. So this would be um, the whole family of solutions for this kind. Remember, there's infinitely many, so t is just any integer. Okay, so this is an entire family of solutions. Okay, so now we have to kind of analyze what would, what would work here. So we know that these values have to all be at least zero. So x naught was negative 70 plus 3t, that has to be, well, at least 0. And at the same time, y naught, which was 140, minus 5t, has to be greater than or equal to 0 as well. So both components have to be non-negative. That's, that's the point, right? Um, so these are going to give us opposite conditions on t. Um, for example, the first one tells me that t is at least 70 over 3, right? But remember that t is going to be an integer, so really we can take the ceiling of 70 over 3, which is going to be 72 over 3, which is going to be 24, I believe. So t is really at least 24 on the one hand. And on the other hand, for the second equation, t is less than or equal to 140 over 5, and that one I think is an easy one, uh, 28. So t is between 24 and 28, that sounds like five cases, because t could be 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28. So I won't write them all down, but let me at least just do one to sort of show you what would happen. So if t is equal to 24, for example, that would be the first one you'd probably write down. So you put in 24 for t right here, so you're going to take x naught and add 72, because 3 times 24 is 72. So that's negative 70 plus 72. So x naught would be, well not x naught, but x would be 2, right? And then y would be 140 minus uh, 24 times 5, I believe, is 120. So 140 minus 120 would be 20. And now z doesn't appear here, but remember that we have an equation that will allow us to find z. Right? So z is um, 23 minus x minus y, so z would be 1. So one way to get 137 points with this scoring system would be to have two four-point field goals, 26-point field goals, and one nine-point field goal. Right. Uh, yeah, right. Right. So on the test, when we find like the two t's, let's say we see the pattern, we don't have to do the work. Right? Wait, well, what do you mean by you don't have to do the work? What work? Well, there's, we do the work for 24, and then we do the work for 25, and then yeah. we see the pattern, so you don't have to do all five. Oh, you mean? Uh, oh, you mean if I if I do the next one? Oh, because it's lin because the equations are linear, you can just. Well, you're not really having to do any serious work anyway, right? You're just. Yeah, no, that would be fine. No, that, yeah, that's fine. So if, if x, so for t equals 25, what you're going to find is that you're going to add 75. So this is going to go up by 3, right? At the same time, I think this one's going to go down by 5, right? So this is down to 15, and then z is 3, right? That's what you're talking about? Yeah, so every time this one goes up by 3, this one's going down by, by 5. Exactly. And eventually, so the Eventually, you know, you have three more cases here. You have y equals 10, y equals 5, and then y equals 0. And then if you go any further than that, y would become negative, and now you're back to a, something that doesn't make sense. All right, so, you, so can I stop here, right? So you have five solutions to that that you could, that you could write down in theory. Okay, great. All right, um, we're doing pretty well here. Done a lot of computational stuff. So we've had some Diophantine equations. 
we've had some systems of equations. I didn't really do the Chinese remainder theorem um, so far. I guess I feel like that's fairly straightforward if you actually know the formula. Um, you know, as long as the mods are relatively prime, so I'm not sure if I'll do one of those or not. Well, I could do one of those. Well, let's just see how this goes. We'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, what do I want to do here? Yeah, let's try this one. So I'm on number six. Okay. Number six. Prove for all n greater than or equal to 1, 27 divides 2 to the 5n plus 1 power plus 5 to the n plus 2 power. I'm not going to be asking you the problems that are on the hardest side of the homework problems, but the easy to medium difficulty ones would be kind of what I would think is fair game. And so this would be an example of something I think is on the easy to medium side. Um, you know, it doesn't require a huge amount of you know comprehension, like in the sense of like creatively setting up a problem. Okay, so I I would be less likely to ask that one. But something like this, I think I, I would. What do you guys think? Have an idea? Is it? So using induction? Okay. So we can do this with induction. So induction would be. Induction would do what first? Base case, which is? One. Okay, n equals one. So we do that. Uh, the question is if we take uh, 27, does it divide 2 to the. 6 plus 5 to the third. Well, I have to figure out what this is. Uh, 2 to the sixth is uh, 64, right? And uh, 5 cubed is 125. So if I work that out, I get 189. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, it goes in there seven times. So you just put a check there, okay? I'm fine with that. All right, then we have to do the induction step. Um, you guys want me to uh, assume the n version and prove the n plus 1 version? Or you want me to assume the n minus 1 version and prove the n version? I saw you guys do it both ways in the homework. Um, I like to assume the n minus 1 version and prove the n version so that the thing that I'm proving is what's actually printed on the board there. So I like to assume, I'll do it my way. And if you don't like my way, you can always go practice it your way if you learned it uh, differently. So I'm going to assume that 27 divides uh, 2 to the 5 times the quantity n minus 1 plus 1 plus 5 to the um, n minus 1 plus 2, which is, of course, just n plus 1. So we can actually simplify this. So i.e. 27 divides 2 to the what is it, 5n minus 4 plus 5 to the n plus 1. We're going to assume that. I'm going to assume that, and then I'm going to try to prove that the next case is true. So I have to prove that 27 divides you know, the thing that's appearing at the top now. So now you see the reason I like to do the proof that way is then that we need to show it right here. This is what you want to do. Okay. Uh, anybody have any ideas how to, how to make that work? Assuming this, assuming that at the bottom, I want to show that. So rewrite the divisibility equation. Certainly we can do that. So we have we have 2 to the 5n minus 4 
plus 5 to the n plus 1 equals 27k for some integer k. All right. I can go along with that. Anybody want to take the next? Can you, can you like manipulate the exponent to look like the top? Yeah, so we want this as the exponent we want, right? So um, what I would actually suggest that we do is take this expression, and, and we want to show that it's a multiple of 27. So take this expression and try to feed in this part of it somehow. So uh, then 2 to the 5n plus 1 plus 5 to the n plus, in other words, instead of trying to build up to what you want, take what you want and figure out how to put the smaller, this is sort of the smaller version of the, of the assumption into it. So how can I make that happen? Okay, so this would be 2 to the 5n times 2, mm -hmm. times 2 basically. But I could do that, but the thing is the 2 to the 5n and the 2 to the 1 are not leading me back to where my assumption came from. Yeah, Fran? So, so 27 divides this whole thing, so therefore it divides... And then 27 also divides the n. Oh, this one? Thought. I'm not sure how to do it. Can you change the 5n plus 1 to like 5n minus 4 plus 5? Yeah, that, this probably would be you know, the thing I would think of doing. So take the 5n plus 1 exponent and break it down like that. Okay? Um, and then do something similar here, right? So the 5 to the n plus 2 would be like 5 times 5 to the n plus 1. So I see that this part added to this part, the two things I underline, when I add those together, I have a multiple of 27, but each of them is multiplied by a different, by a different amount. Um, anybody see anything I can do now? Look at it, mod 27. Yeah, I'm going to come back to that in a minute. Um, What's the difference? So, so look at the scalars here. We have uh, 32 and 5. Those two numbers give you any thoughts? Yeah, 27, which is the magic number of the hour here, is uh, the difference of 32 and 5. So here's what you could think of doing. You could think of writing this as 5 plus 27 right there because 5 plus 27 is 32, and then add 5 times 5 to the n plus 1. Oh. Ta -da. Because now, <laughs> there's a factor of 27 right here. Okay, I can pull that part out. 27 times 2 to the 5n minus 4. That's this times this. And then the rest of it is a factor of 5 multiplied by 2 to the 5n minus 4 plus 5 to the n plus 1. And this part is also a multiple of 27. So we actually have a factor of 27 that comes out of the entire thing and leaves us with 2 to the 5n minus 4 plus uh, 5 times what we call k. Alright? Now here's the thing. This isn't the way I would have done this problem. <laughs> I, mean, I, I wanted to carry it through and show this to you because, I mean, th th this is perfectly okay, but you, I want you to appreciate that it's a little bit of a lengthy and messy solution. We had to be a little bit clever, for example, right here, and happen to notice that you know, 5 and 32 is exactly the, the 20 factor of 27 that we wanted. And you have done some problems 
this way, you know, early in the semester before we learned about some of the later material that could make this problem easier. At this point, everything is fair game. So if you, uh, you don't have to feel like, oh, well, I have to solve this problem using the basic approach, right? If we covered it in the class, you can use anything at this point. Okay, so don't worry about that. So does anybody have maybe a better or cleaner or <laughs> faster way to, to do this problem? Joseph? Yeah, looking at everything mod 27 is going to make this so clean. And actually, it's a great way to convince yourself why modular arithmetic is so powerful. Right? So uh, this is sort of solution number two. This is an easier approach would just be to just take the thing you have, no induction at all, no induction at all. Just take what you have and look at it in the world of mod 27. So here you've got a 2 to the, okay, so this is 2 to the 5n. Somebody had mentioned this earlier. 2 to the 5n times 2, and then plus 5 to the n times 5 squared. So you could just break it down like that, okay? And then, of course, this is mod 27. By the way, you don't have to write mod uh, 27 all the time. You can just write it once and then put a little arrow down, so I just as long as I know that it's a congruence equation. And now, the thing about this is, what can I do with this? Mm, let's not do that. You can take 2 to the 5th. Yeah. And then on the outside, have the n. Exactly. 2 to the 5n is like 32 to the n. And what is 32 in the world of mod 27? 5. So this is really 5 to the n times 2 plus 5 to the n times 5 squared. Now what would you like me to do? Sorry? Expand the... Okay, I'm just going to factor out 5 to the n. <laughs> I don't understand all this complicated stuff. So, okay, so I have a 2 plus, oh, I'm expanding it. Now I get it. 25. That's expanding. <laughs> Expand 5 squared. I get 25. Okay, good. So 2 plus 25 is 27, so that's congruent to 0. Try to be careful with your equal signs and congruence.